was made in Nigeria. Access Corp PLC, a Pan-African Financial Services Group headquartered in Nigeria, has unveiled a new five-year strategic plan for the group. Part of the target set by the parent company of Arcus Bank Nigeria was to be among the top five banks in Africa at the end of the new strategic cycle. Let's take a listen now to Herbert Wigwe, the group chief executive officer of Access Corps, and Roosevelt Ogbona, the CEO of Access Bank Nigeria. Going into the next five years, what we've done is to look at Africa, first of all, as our continent. You have to be strong at home first before you go out. All right, and ask ourselves, where are the opportunities in the context of the continent? Then you have to ask yourself, what is there to be done internationally? And then finally, what we then told ourselves is, look, the whole world is going through significant structural shifts and changes. There are changes with respect to technology, changes with respect to demographics, changes with respect to data and cost of data. Look, if I ask anybody here, 20 years ago, will you do retail? The answer would be no. The cost of saving in my village is too much. Uh, how much will you pay the teller, etc.? But guess what? Technology has made all of those things so much easier, particularly in Africa. But the World Bank has, has done studies which shows about 370 million Africans are underserved, and that puts Nigeria's figure at something like 60 million customers, 60 million Nigerians. For us, it is a massive opportunity for financial inclusion, and we can make, basically make sure that we are profitable with those customers. Access Bank today, I think we do, we onboard something like one and a half million retail customers every month. All right? And we'll continue to do so. So the idea is that in this unbanked population, we will continue to push and get more and more people into the financial services sector that will lead to financial deepening and support our markets. We found in 2021 there was an addressable market pool in terms of revenues from Africa from electronic payments, all right? of about $24 billion and growing by 30% year on year. We found that the regular regulated lending business, all right, is about $3.6 billion. And that speaks to some of the things which we are talking about as far as our digital business is concerned. We found out that the trade in Sub-Saharan Africa, all right, can provide that there is, there is room, I'm talking about international trade, for almost $950 billion. This is something that some of the Western banks have left for us. So when you find the likes of Barclays living and all of that, this creates new opportunities for us to get into those markets and make money. And of course, um, as far as former remittances are concerned, there's something like $100 billion that is supposed to be made there. Just think about that large uh, uh, corridor between Nigeria and Cameroon, the largest that you can see in the continent. We have not yet begun, we've not yet started getting the benefits of the cross-border trade and remittances and payments that exist inside that, inside that corridor. We don't want a franchise that can be disintermediated. We want to continue to support the entire continent. We want to support um, the Access Bank uh, family of nations, if you understand what I'm saying, to make sure that we basically reap the full benefits of, 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 of the continent. For the next five years, in terms of positioning, we will be one of the top five banking groups in the continent by the end of the strategic cycle in terms of revenues, in terms of asset base, and on a balanced scorecard basis. We will plan to deliver solid returns on investments to our shareholders and will continue to target north of 25%. As a top five bank in the continent, our focus will continue to be on cost management and to make sure that our cost of income ratio will be below 55%. And we think that given the fact that we continue to be in growth mode, that that represents um, you know, a ratio that is not bad. Begin to think about what it means in Nigeria um, to have this type of cost to income ratio if you are growing, given the impact of, of, of your cash reserve ratio and all of that kind of stuff, devaluation on your investments, et cetera, et cetera. In terms of, we will have stronger capital and liquidity ratios that will translate from all the activities uh, carried out, being carried out during the, during the period. And in terms of geographical, um, again, Roosevelt spoke to some of these points, our net interest margin will be greater than 6%. Our cost of funds will be between 3 to 3.5%. And um, we will see, um, in terms of contribution, the Nigerian bank will be contributing um, about 52% of revenues, and it used to be 82% um, by, by uh, the close of business in 2027. And from a PVT standpoint, it will reduce to about 33%. I'm talking of the Nigerian bank. What this slide is trying to show is just the credibility that we've built and the significant growth that has happened between 2017 
2021, which was our full year audited numbers, and just give some perspective on nine months into 2022. Across every financial matrix, we have done exceedingly well. Uh, you look at our gross revenues, uh, they beat in the market. Average market growth rate was about 6%. Uh, and this is across the African continent. Access Bank grew by 21%. If you look at our profit before tax, uh, that grew compounded over, over a four-year period starting 2017 by about 30% uh, compared to a market uh, that was lagging at about 14 our total asset and our total deposits grew by about 30% and 27% each. Again, almost twice the growth rate of the market on an average basis. Uh, so it's been a solid performance outstripping average market growth rate. Um, our ratios are no different. Uh, we've seen the uh, ROEs grow from what's about 13.7 to about 18%. We've seen our MPLs uh, improve from what is about 4.8 to 3.7. A capital adequacy ratio remained north of 20%, closing at about 22.5%, um, nine months of 2022. Our cost to income ratio remains elevated, and I think I'll speak to that further in the slides. The next slide just shows that this growth has been extremely diversified. So there's no one income line that has led. Uh, so around the four principal income lines that the bank generates today. So we have interest income. We are, we are, after all, a commercial bank, so that will always represent the largest part of our income numbers.